Hello ladies and gents. So I have a new project um, inspired by, well, my father. We are quite into audio and so we went to a couple of hi-fi shows. Um, we've been to a couple of places and seen quite a lot of stuff. Some things that you would just think are out of this world. Um, um, some quite spectacular specimens of audio equipment um, and so one of the things that was really interesting was electrostatic speakers so um, I'm not quite sure about the technicalities of how they work to the fullest extent although I do have um, an idea as to, as to how they work but they are really quite unique speakers and they aren't very big um, they are quite thin and basically they use instead of having a, uh, a conventional uh, coil driven driver they have uh, just a thin membrane in between two stators which is energized by electrostatic um, and then uh, the sound or the, the, the input from your amplifier goes into the stator which then makes the membrane in between which is coated with a, a very fine graphite um, it makes it vibrate and that's when you get sound um, so yeah um, it's the technicalities are very different from um, a normal conventional driver which is a very very simplistic uh, coil and magnet system whereas these don't have any magnets in them um, it's, it's literally just electrostatic and a bunch of transformers so uh, so I bought these on eBay anyway normally these are quite expensive these are quad ESL 57s uh, so they, these were the first electrostatic speakers to actually be out in the market they are made in Britain and um, they are very old these were produced in the 1950s 60s era these in particular are quite original um, they have very low serial well, I say very low but they are quite low serial numbers so uh, one of them is in the 9000s and the other one is in the 15000s and so when I bought them they were extremely dirty um, they had never had the front covers taken off which I've had to do obviously because I want to um, maintain them but Also, I did have to do some work to them, which I'm going to go through. So, I have taken the backs off. So, here are the backs. Um, there you go, the quad electrostatic loudspeaker. Serial number is there on this one, 15,050. And it has also the protection board. Um, so they have been serviced and they have been taken back to Quad or some audio store that has put the protection board in because the protection board was brought in to protect uh, the tweeter panel because the tweeter panel was, they, they blow quite often um, as, as far as I'm aware, they blow quite often and it's because of the input from the amplifier being being too high so they, they, they designed a small circuit which is attached to the output transformer um, and this limits the current coming from the amplifier into the, the tweeter. So yeah, um, so yeah there you go that's number 15,000 and that is 9,277 yeah so they are quite old um, and this can be proved by um, so basically well the work that I've done so far is um, I've had to replace the EHT block um, and they came in different forms so the first ESLs to come out had 
the resin block. Now this is a complete block and it's resin. Um, as you can see it's completely encased um, inside there and there is no way of being able to do any sort of maintenance to this um, because it's well it's resin and it's just you, you'll never get in there so you can only replace that um, and I've had to replace this one because the uh, when I played music through the speaker it was very quiet a very well it was very very quiet almost like it wasn't working at all um, and I've never worked on electrostatic speakers before but I've read on a few forums and a couple of websites that they've said if you have any kind of um, low output or no sound um, or anything like that it's standard procedure to replace the, the, the EHT block and especially if it is a resin block throw it away it's, there's nothing you, to, you can do with it but the later model, the model after, I'll say the model after, the serials after 16,000 or so, um, they had a very similar EHT block, but it was encased in wax, which meant that you could just melt the wax, take out the board inside, do what you need to do with it if you have to do any work to it, which is basically just replace some diodes on it because they were the things that blew. Melt the wax again, put it in the, in the case, uh, wait for it to set, plug it back together and then away you go. Um, unfortunately I don't have the luxury of having a wax block so I had to get a completely new EHT board so I had to replace that one and so I bought two because I thought well the one that was in the, uh, the other speaker is this one and it's not burnt it's just dirty, it's really 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 dirty um, and this one, I guess, is relatively old as well because um, not only is this just obviously the board, but it's encased also in wax. It's just got a wax layer on the actual circuit board itself. So I'm not entirely sure if this is an original EHT board, uh, although it does look relatively old. So I'm not entirely sure where this came from. Um, and whether Quad did also um, produce speakers with this on it. Um, so I'm not too sure. Uh, but this is basically what's inside this one. It's just a couple of diodes, a couple of capacitors, resistors and that's it. Um, but like I say, I don't know how long that's been in there and I just thought well I'll just replace them both and just hope for the best and see what happens. So uh, that's what I've done. Um, and as I have actually taken these off so we can have a look behind the covers. So I'll put those out of the way. Like so. So this is basically what they look like. This is a base panel. That's also a base panel. This in the section in the middle is the tweeter panel. Um, this one, it's still quite dirty. Um, something has obviously gone through the cover and has made a mess of the dust cover. I'm not quite sure what, it's very sticky though, um, but I hope I'll be able to get that off. Um, I have just gone over them with the hoover very quickly and gently because they were just absolutely disgusting. Um, I mean, like I say, the, the front covers had never been taken off. They had still the original staples in. So anyway, let's go around the back and I'll show you what they are. So, you can see here, 
This one has had some kind of work, I would think, because, well, that's obviously not the original wood. Um, and even I can tell you that. And I'm, I've, I've, I've never worked on such a spectacle before. So, um, yeah, this has obviously been replaced, but it is falling off because I took the staple out um, because there was a dust cover across this, uh, which I will be replacing, obviously. Um, but I took it off because I wanted to make sure that there was no arcing on any of the panels, especially the tweeter panel, because apparently they are, like I say, very prone to arcing. So I took the dust cover off just to make sure that everything is okay. <clears throat> um, other than that, there was down here, you can see a very clear patch. And this is, so this is the dust cover and this protects the membrane that's on the inside which you can't actually see uh, because it's in between the panel here and there's two of these panels one on this side and one on the opposite side and oh see the dirt there and in between those two panels is the membrane and this shield this plastic here protects the membrane from any dust because they well they're electrostatic so they get a lot of attention from dust so this protects that from the dust and um, obviously these are quite aged and you know they're 50, 60 years old, um, maybe even in the 70s if they were made in the 1950s so that's already 50, 70 years old, so 70 years old. Um, so yeah, you can appreciate that these uh, will, you know, they're, they're quite tender, you have to be very careful and sometimes they break. And originally, when I first got them, they had already been repaired here with some tape, which was flaking, very old, very yellow, and it's, it just did not look good, and I didn't want it to be rattling and vibrating. So, for now, at the moment, I have just put over it some tape. Not normal tape, you can't really use uh, just normal cellar tape. What I've used is like, it's very plastic, quite soft, um, and I'm not entirely sure exactly what the materialistic composition of it is, but it's very, um, it's not too tacky, it's just like normal tape, but it's, it's, it's very plastic. That's the only way really I can explain it to you. Um, so because of this, and it has have, it does have a few tears, you can see uh, the tape is here too. It's lost a bit of its tension, uh, because these covers are really quite tight so that they don't, you know, resonate. They are supposed to reproduce, obviously, the, the sound coming from the membrane. So to get that as clean as possible, they're under very high tension. Um, but yeah, obviously, when they break, they lose that tension. Um, normally, it's, 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 it's good practice to actually just take the whole panel out, take off the cover, and then replace them obviously in a very clean and dust free environment um, but obviously I haven't done that. The EHT block that I referred to earlier is now here this is what I replaced um, and you can see that I still have the original bulgin plug um, but I had to replace the the wire inside because well I mean it was just really not very great um, so I bought this one. It's really really quite thick. Actually, it's too thick. I had to really force it in um, But it's very very thick. So it's it's quite nice um, Banana jacks gold plated um, Thick audio cable going straight to the amplifier there, which is um, a Tenzai uh, this is the output transformer um, and yeah, that will output obviously to these panels. You can see the wiring to the panels there. Also here. It does have the original uh, input transformer there. And also obviously the original transformer inside here too. It also has still the original capacitors and resistors inside. Um, so I haven't touched these at all. This, I assume, like I say, I'm not too savvy on these quads, um, but I, this is, I assume, the protection board for the, uh, the, the, the treble panel.
to stop it from being overdriven uh, from the amplifier um, and of course that will then save it from being blown and arcing. They are really actually quite something and to say that these were made you know 70 years ago yeah these are really something um, something I've never experienced before they are very very alive and very with you um, but my take on the sound is yes I could say it's very clear extremely clear and they reproduce sound so so well um, and to say that it's not being played on a valve amplifier but it's played on a also a very old transistor amplifier um, the the output is actually really really good um, so I'm really quite surprised at um, the way that they present themselves um, you know they sound so so good but the caveat of electrostatics or the caveat of these is that they are very very directional I don't know if you noticed that when I was walking around and showing you guys behind the panels and stuff um, it is very very direct um, so you know when you stood by the side of them or just around them um, you can't really hear the what you need to be hearing to hear it properly and hear it well um, obviously you can hear it in the house because I mean of course um, the sounds bouncing off of all the walls but when you sat next to them or beside them um, you can really tell that it's not aimed at you um, so to really get the listening experience you need to be sat in, um, really in front of them in the right position and only then would you really really get to feel how these speakers really present themselves to you and it's really quite a nice experience if you get it right so if you don't have a set of these and you are looking to buy a set of these I highly recommend them if you have a little bit of electronics knowledge behind you um, of course if you're working with them you need to be extremely careful because they are dealing with 610 volts from the mains transformer and then from the EHT block which is on top of the block, uh, mains transformer the output is between um, 3 and 6 kilovolts um, so you must be very very cautious when it comes to working on them um, but you will find a lot of interesting reading and a lot of information on basically how to maintain them, how to look after them, what to do when you have some issues and you can always ask the question on any kind of audio forum and people do know very very well about them. Uh, if you like say interested in buying a set of these go ahead but make sure that when you get them you don't turn them on unless the person that you're buying from is running them already and if not don't turn them on because you can risk making or risk damaging the panels if they are arcing and I highly suggest that as soon as you get them home you don't use them but you actually just take off the front covers take them apart give them a good clean and be very careful of course and check for arcing before you turn those on because if you turn them on and they are arcing you could blow a transformer um, you know you could blow anything else and it, you know, if you are experiencing uh, arcing, you will need to replace the panels, um, or at least one of. So yeah, be very, very careful because you will risk making them far worse than they already are if they aren't any in a good condition. So yeah, that's that's all I have to say really. Is just be careful when you buy them. But um, yeah, if you do get a good, nice set of working, clean quads um, psh, I mean it's totally worth the money I hope you enjoyed that guys um, I will um, hopefully be posting some other videos soon and uh, yeah hopefully uh, you enjoyed this thanks for watching